things. Finally, there is the challenge of food security. Now, this company is primarily, not exclusively, because it's a very diverse company, an impressively diverse company, in terms of all the products and services that the company is into. But primarily, you're in the food business. And serving those who are in the food business, that's the majority of it. Look at the challenge for those of you who are in the food business. I just came across this statistic in the last couple of weeks as I was working on a report on the future of the economy for a state government. The global population is growing. Eventually, it might stop growing, but it's still growing today. We have 6.8 billion people in the world today. And even the most conservative forecasts by the United Nations and others say that we'll have about 9 billion people on the planet in the year 2050, 40 years from now. Now, if you look at what 9 billion people are going to need to eat between now and 2050, it means in the next 40 years, we have to produce as much food as in all of history up till now. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you have to remember back in 1900, there were only a little over a billion people on the planet. Now we have 6.8 billion. So you've got 6.8 billion people eating every day, plus another 3 billion people eating every day. And if you add it all up in 40 years, the next 40 years, we've got to produce as much food on this planet as we have in all of history up till now. How are we going to do that? That's the challenge. It requires 21st century agriculture. It requires everything that we can think of about how to grow food in a sustainable way, in an economical way, in a way that will enable this many people to survive at a reasonable standard of living after the year 2050. That's the real challenge of global food security. In the end, preferred future planning is not really about the future. We engage